Greetings, Marshier, and welcome to episode 226 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to build our new module setup and see how it works for Speed Module 5s. Enjoy! So with that, I think we're ready. But just to get an idea of space, we can pick this up and make one final check that it fits. And it basically does. There's some power poles that aren't part of this design, but otherwise it would fit. And we also have an idea of scope because we need to do this four times for speed, efficiency, productivity, and the pollution cleaning. And then this last one will be fairly compact. So we need to do this four times. And how big would it be if we did it four times? Well, <laughs> yeah, like one, two, three, four. Pretty much take up the whole thing. Uh, another turn of shame inbound? Uh, we should be fine. We have space down here, and I'm thinking that uh, when slash if it reaches the end, we should just change where these uh, tracks are and just have it keep going straight. We'll eventually have to expand, but you see though that we're kind of running out of space here, so we're not that far away from expanding anyway, because a lot of this stuff is earmarked. Like this belt needs to extend all the way down, so it's going to need this whole space. Puffers are going to basically need this whole space to expand. The intermediate bus needs this whole space to expand. Down here with metals, it needs to expand all the way down here. This area up here is reserved for this to expand upwards. So there's really only like a few sections. This is fairly open right here, but it's also kind of not particularly convenient anymore. So we are uh, kind of running out of space. <laughs> so. Expansion will happen soon, probably, but uh, I think we'll be able to keep going with what we have for now. So now that we have this, I kind of want to remove these random places where all the robots were set up, and then do it a little nicer, because robots need to be a part of our design now. That seems to be a little cleaner. It's going to need lights too. Of course there's really not a lot of room for it in a lot of these places. Kind of want to wait for nighttime though. It'll make placing lights a little easier. They're not that important anyway. So we've got our whole setup now. There we go. I guess the robots will help as much as they can. Our new setup is about this size, and we want to try to line it up with what's down here, which would be right here. So very carefully walk it up. Looks like it's one square away from the end, so we have an idea there. Kind of want to space it a little bit. It would be something like this. And it looks lined up. We need to help the bots by extending the network. Otherwise our personal bots are going to try to do everything. And let's give them some charge spots. And some parking spaces. <laughs> Lots of activity. Now that this is mostly placed, we want to start feeding resources in, but I don't want to just do everything because I want to try to test each one of these systems incrementally. So if one of them is messed up, we can fix it before placing a bunch of belts and items. <laughs> Looks like some uh, resources got kind of mixed up in here. Not terribly sure how this is happening, but it's happening in little bursts, so that's interesting. But it seems to have stopped going down. So that's a... Might have just been a temporary situation of placing them in the incorrect positions. Make sure they didn't make it too far. They don't seem like they did. We're going to need to have... 
the ferric chloride and the sulfuric acid moved in, it might be easier to just move them from over here. But since we're going to be placing a lot of machines there, for now it might be easier just to send them across here as a temporary thing. Build to the right, and then once they're over here, connect them, and then disconnect the parts here. So like for example we have ferric chloride down there already. So I'm going to assume that it's going to come through up here. <laughs> Pretty much at the very top. So we can connect that. Have it come over there. And then to connect it for now we can just grab from here. Jump across. It's not entirely in the right spot, but close enough for now. So we get all that in there. It takes a few moments to flow. But it's filling up. I guess since it's nighttime now, it's good enough for some lights. And we should have everything hooked up to test these boards here. It looks like we have one extra inserter in there. Is that on the other side too? Kind of. We'll let this start filling up. We might get slightly better performance by putting some reds in here. Probably don't need it for output reasons, but it'll fill up faster if we just do that. Okay, they're making it to the bottom. So let's throw the fiberglass boards in there. And see what happens. The crafting time is... extremely long. <laughs> but it is what it is. 20 seconds at 20% speed, so... Oh well. But this is... All we need, I believe, it's something like 8 or so. 8.8, .8, so that should be fine. It's just, when you're watching it, it's slow. Oh, there's a, a huge line of them. Let's make sure these get placed in the correct location. Seems like it. Now we'll need to give this some time to fill up. Is it just me or are they all placing it on the same side? Ah, these need to be distance changing. There we go. As are these. There we go. Well, we're starting to fill up already, so... That much is working. Since other components go into... These blue boards. We should probably... Lock it back here. And do some of these other things. Well, module contacts would be pretty easy. Just... Silver and copper. So we'll connect those and see what happens. Contacts come up and injected where they need to go. Let's see if both sides grab from this. Looks like it. Let's see, these are 20 per second. So. It looks like it's clogging, but that's because this is enough module contacts for two setups, not one. So, it's got a yellow belt limitation here, but that's okay. It seems to be working. Okay, now we need to get rubber and wire in here. And it uh, looks like we're probably going to start using up some of our rubber on belts. Because I'm not sure where else to really put it, other than kind of going straight across here. So we need to find a new spot 
And it might be kind of difficult, considering the bus got flipped around. So let's just use the farthest away slots, since those aren't used for anything. We still need them for rather small numbers. I wonder, do we even need a belt at all? No. Hey, look. <laughs> 0 0.05 per second. I think we're fine. Uh, for this... I think we could just use some logistic spots, really. I know it's kind of weird, them flying around, but for such a tiny amount... I think we can do just fine... ...with some logistics. And we'll set that. As long as it's less than 200, go for it. And also that will be our place for jamming rubber, if we don't have anywhere else to put it. We probably do, but whatever. That'll be a supply chest. So let's do the requester. So we'll do here, near side, requester, and we'll request, I don't know, probably like 100 rubber. Yeah, that should be perfectly all right. And since this is a logistics request, we want to be nice to the robots. Give them somewhere to park once they've made their delivery. <laughs> there they are already. Those are some happy robots. Okay, now we need the tinned wire. And they have their very long crafting time. And there goes the rubber wire being inserted. Let's get the plastic in here. And those get sucked in. So now we need to handle the sulfuric acid and kind of the same reason as the other one. Let's try to get them hooked up. In the same way, well, we used every last space available here. We can come in here and just do something temporary. So it'll work. And it's flowing in all of these. Okay, we need silicon now. There it goes. And that's all we need to start production. So they're coming up in here. Being delivered down here and both of these machines need them. So they should pull them in and they do. The rest of them are being sent in here, and they are being sucked in. Looking good. Looks like we're low on energy, so let's put a charge pad somewhere that's convenient. There we go. Charge up. It's kind of interesting how some of the solar panels are still connected, even though I would think that they're not supposed to be. Not that it really matters, it's just the way that it's set up is that that's not the case. Yeah, and I guess it's because the reach of these is hitting these panels down here. It doesn't really matter, but it was set up to disconnect to allow some space in the batteries for the purposes of byproduct burning, but it looks like it doesn't matter. The amount is low enough. So we could probably leave it. Maybe if we put more panels down in the future, we can kind of pick them up, but for now, it's probably okay to ignore. Let's see, this one is not ejecting. It looks like it's missing an inserter. So it needs to be a near. Looks like it's missing it on the other side too. And these ones just never got their resources to begin with. Let's make sure that the numbers are good. Where that is 15.8. And those are less, so that's not good. Is there just too many machines here? 
44. Now yeah, that number makes sense. Ah, uh, it's 4.62, and I only put 4 on here. Well, I think we have just enough room to put one more in here. There we go. That should be balanced now. But nonetheless, it's all filled up. So let's take care of these guys. Silver wire. Let's hook it up. Looks good, the plastic. And then we need the silicon. Let's see how this works. Hopefully I got the number of machines correct this time. Seems like I did. So they're getting put on this belt here. Some of them are being sent down this way. They're getting pulled in. The rest of them are getting mixed with the other components. And getting properly pulled in. Okay. We need to get our crystals up here. And the gems. As far as the gems, the amount is so low, one per second, and they're kind of difficult to make. We're probably fine with delivering them by drone most of the way, and then having logistics spots take them the last little bit. And we should be good on the gems now. Let's make sure. Oh yeah. All nice and multicolored. So it all caught up while we were building this. So let's do some request depots. Six of them. Although it might make more sense to keep the road going here. So they don't have quite as far to go, but eh, I think we're okay with having a few bots fly around every once in a while. You gotta think of all the different logistics that you have available to you. And uh, drones could only take it so far, they would still have to be flown in there by bots anyway, so what's the difference if they have to do this than, like, a couple of going up like that, so this should be alright. So we'll make a request for each of them. Although we don't need all of them actually right now, I was thinking. <laughs> we only need the rubies. So just the one will work. We'll insert into a provider. And put like 200 in there. Hopefully it doesn't run out while they're sending them up here, but... We'll just put the one drone in and see how it works. The field truck is right there, so... It is getting ready. We also need to get all of those other crystals up, and I probably should grab... A ton of belts. Because this is going to use a ton of belts. Looks like we finally made it through that huge backlog of belts. So now we have caught up. Well, I'm just going to grab all of them. <laughs> so we're probably going to need a bunch of it. Alright, we're going to have our new crystals, which we haven't really connected to anything yet. But we kind of want to send them up here. We don't really want to go the long way around because they wouldn't be needed down here. So we would probably... come through here... and here get rid of the belts to make it look a little cleaner. And although the colors look fine now, they're probably going to get reversed because they're flipping sides on the bus, but whatever. Kind of want to make sure they make it through all of this. Yep. So we need to pick a new spot for them. Well, it looks like the side that has the silver wire has two empty belts on it. Is it being used up here for anything? Because it would be this spot right here. And it seems like no. So that's the ninth and 10th spot 
on the second group. Okay. One thing we can do to make this a little cleaner is every time we're pulling off, we'll just say we want the blue ones because we're only using them for this one thing. And actually, by the time this gets here, these crystals wouldn't even be part of it anyway, but we'll uh, fix that later. But we can uh, pull it off like this. get those blue crystals in here. It should be fine, I think, with half a belt. We're going to need... Yeah, 8.58 across two of them. So it should be fine, split like this. Although, one problem of doing it that way is it doesn't uh, get sent over here. So that is kind of a problem of doing it that way. Actually, we can do something like this. And sent over. No, it's making it messy. We'll need a space in here. So it can go like that and then skip over. There we go. Yeah, it's only on one side of the belt, but it doesn't really matter. We don't need it on both sides, so... It's a slightly cleaner way of getting it done. So let's put solder in. actually has an input limitation. Okay, lots and lots of solder. Get split down on those lines. And keeps going. Get split over here. And over there. Okay, the last thing these need are those crystals, which are right here. So those boards are taking the U-turn and going back down there, as well as being sent over here. Seems good so far. It's a very detailed model those boards. Well, let's look here. We just need the rubies and the speed modules. Okay, well we need one ruby a second. And hopefully they're mostly available now. Yep, they made it. We'll do a requester asking for Let's say 100 rubies. And connect. And there they go, the robots to grab them. Looking good. So if all this is set up, we just need the modules, which is true. Okay. As far as the modules, we probably should put them on a drone. We don't need very many of them, but they're also right next to a drone path. So we don't need a storage location for them anymore. We can also get rid of them from our character. Although, since we've been placing a lot of them, we might find them at some point. So we'll put a storage chest here. With an inserter. To put them in there. And with this, we'll want it to be set to some number. Mm. Yeah, let's just do a drone amount. So it's less than or equal to 600. And the limiter. Equal to or greater than 600 to turn on. Okay. Modules available. It's not much of a distance, but it does get them closer without using bots, so we might as well do it this way. Then making the request for the tier twos. One robot. 
And the same thing on the other side here. We're about to see how this whole thing works. Seems like um, putting them in here would be good. And we only need the one per second, so... We'll just make the request for our Speed Module 2s. Although we probably don't want to make it quite yet. Because robots might actually send them. We want the drone to deliver it first. And I guess we can help the drone by pushing it. There we go. Now that it's available, we can make the request. Let's go with 100. And there the bots go to grab them. Well, this is exciting. I'm pretty uh, proud with how this came out. It's rather square, rather compact. And yeah, once we get these modules, we could have made this even more compact, but I don't know if I want to micromanage to that extent, where the second I get the modules, I rebuild this again just to make it smaller. I think I'd rather just copy this four times <laughs> than do that. And even copying it won't entirely be easy because we're going to have to... because we can't rotate this because of some of these pipes, so we're going to have to copy and paste that a little bit to make it work, but... Let's see how this goes. Well, it got pushed over. I did notice, though, that this inserter isn't quite lined up here, so let's have it go here and just use a corner inserter. There, down there. And then the status of this can be less than 1,000. Let's get rid of our junk and see if it finds its way to where it needs to go. I think it did. But, uh, all these are going. Make sure these chests aren't being super full. Well, they've got nothing in them, so I guess that's good. What kind of factory power output? Well, not nothing. 160 megawatts or thereabouts. But this is running well. Let's make sure there's no blockages anywhere else. These are the supply sides, so it's kind of okay if these aren't running at full blast. It's the consumption side over here that we want to make sure that it's not slowing down. And it seems pretty good. These aren't running at full blast, but I think it just has a... a buffer to work its way through. Honestly, it's pretty efficient when you look at it. It's really not using that many resources to do all of this. Are the puffers still puffing away? Nope. Looks like we're uh, making normal crystals now. Well, I guess that makes sense. Because both the normal kind and the upgraded ones we did go into the same modules, so... That's filling up. Looks like steel ran out, though. So that's going to, uh... grind to a halt soon. Well, looking good, we're getting our one module per second. Looks like we ran out of rubies, though. It sent the drone, it just didn't make it. It does have a ways to go, so we'll put in five here. Is that the other one? Yeah. It's down here. So... It almost made it, but not quite. Well, awesome. I won't upgrade this setup anymore, but... Certainly, I'd like my speed module 5s. 50% 
Energy consumption for 100% speed seems good. We'll just replace the other slot and say we want 100. We'll let that run a while, but we do need to get the steel situation taken care of here. Well, we can make the request for it. Negative 512. Turn it off and on again. Replace those with steel. And then we need to kind of chop them up. And uh, it looks like we have some flexibility because the steel isn't being used for some time. We can kind of uh, just follow this down and find a better place for it. Potentially like up in here. So what are we looking at for the rate? Only 8 per second. One of them with their productivity modules does 0.8. So 10 of them. It has an input and an output. So that goes in here. And comes back out. And that should work when it makes it around. This is going to uh, run out shortly, but that's okay. It should fire back up when the steel makes it. And this is going pretty well without us giving it any attention. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we're going to expand the setup to make the other modules that we need. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.